Uh, hello there, uh, welcome back. Uh, this is part two of the tutorial series, C++ tutorial series. Um, I just wanted to make a few comments before getting into the rest of the tutorial. Uh, <coughs> Although it's mentioned in the, in the introduction part, if you haven't watched that, you please uh, go and watch that before this, because there's a lot more explained there. Uh, anyway, and what was I about to say? Uh, Uh, yeah, hmm, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, well, it doesn't matter. The point is, what I want to talk about is this, this thing, this command prompt thing. I want to, uh, just reinforce the idea, I guess, or the fact, <laughs> some ideas. The, the fact is that much of the, um, you know, maybe maybe half or more of the tutorial takes place in this environment. And if you're not able to access this environment, if you're running a Mac or a Linux box or something, and, and there's no way to get in here, then I don't know what this what what to suggest. This is this is the place where I need to be. I need to be able to do this. This is the simulated 8086 Intel microchip microprocessor, if you want, uh, if you will, that we're going to be working with. And this is the sort of thing you know, I need. I need this. I'm just tossing out machine code into the you know into the void anywhere I want I can go with, I, can, I can go over to the null pointer and, and, and start putting in machine code and nothing bad happens you can do anything in here you want because it's it's a fake and you're allowed to touch everything and you can make a mess of things that you didn't you know screw around with the stack frame and no, nothing bad's going to happen because it's fake. Uh, now I, I, I don't know but I know one thing if you if you are running in a Macintosh then the modern ones can boot you up into Windows XP and that has this so that's one way to get here. Uh, they're running an Intel under an uh, Intel uh, architecture, so the chip design is the same. The, the and that's another thing I didn't make explicit. The instruction set here is Intel, not some other one. So again, another restriction. Um, Thirdly, this command prompt thing itself, I, this is not the first version of this, uh, this, tutorial, of this part of the tutorial, this is the second I guess, and in the original one I spent a long time talking about the command prompt program. <coughs> And I realized that for the kinds of people that are, that are going to get anything out of the tutorial itself, I think they, you know, they can either know this or they can figure it out on their own. And I don't need to uh, handhold you through a dirt or something. You, that's your, <laughs> it's backwards again. Uh, <clears throat> so, um yeah so uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go and explain there and uh, lastly or maybe lastly unless i think there's something else this format is going to change 
is once the real lessons start, it's going to be only in this box, only this area, so that when I do this, now I've got two of them going, I make little notes and things in one box, and in the other box, we're uh, tracing through the code. So you, you might be wondering, how the hell did they switch from one screen to the other? It's, it's just that there's two windows, one on top of the other. So, no magic there. You might, be, you might have been confused by that. Um, what else did I want to add? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, in the following videos, now that I've decided that uh, the ones that I currently have there that do all this unnecessary explaining, um, uh, 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 the audio, anyway, will be out of sync with the uh, video, in a sense, and that it'll say, well, this, this is lesson five when it's really lesson four, something like that, because then delete some and move the, move them down. Unless I maybe I could stick an extra one in the middle or something to make it synchronize. Anyway, that, that's not important uh, but what the actual number is. Uh, is there one more thing I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, so so just generally if you're able to if you're not able to get into this environment, I don't have a suggestion. I don't know of any other way to get to be able to run this program on another uh, system. But if you know, all the better. Then you can follow along and try the same experiment and see that it works. Uh, you know, there was one more thing I wanted to say. Can't think of it. Just give me a sec here. It doesn't matter. I guess I can click this out if I don't think of it. Um, well, I guess there's nothing else. It's just okay. Well, the next video then will be the beginning of the of the tutorial. I might actually re-record some of them because uh, I don't I don't know what the state it is when you're watching it. But right now, the audio quality of the at least the next two or three is terrible. Eventually, I went out and bought a new mic, and it seems to be working pretty good. So I might re-record those that just because of the sound, it's really um, <clears throat> not not clear at all. Very difficult to listen, and sometimes the whole sentences just, just seem to disappear into the void. So uh, yeah, anyway, but you wouldn't know the difference, so there's no reason for me to explain that. All right. Okay, well, let's see when the part one of this tutorial, and I forget exactly. Let me see part one bit. Um, where is that? Hmm. It, it's just it, introduction to the debug program. I think we look at the div. Div and div division instructions. Okay. See you there.